Welcome to church on this special Easter Sunday. Uh, an unusual day in that we're all scattered still in our different places, but if you're joining for the first time, then you are so, so welcome. And if you're regularly part of Musburgh Apostolic Church, then you are equally so welcome. We remember the significance of Easter Sunday is when the day that Jesus uh, had not just come to this earth, lived a sinless life, was crucified, but on Easter Sunday was resurrected from the dead. He came back to life, uh, conquering uh, the effects of death so that all, all who accept him and believe in him could have new life. Um, we're going to have an opportunity this morning to have some worship. Uh, we're going to have a, a message uh, during which you will hear Billy Graham, one of the most powerful and effective communicators throughout this generation, uh, uh, sharing the good news of Jesus and some uh, life stories from individuals who have encountered Jesus as well. And then we'll finish with a song and a final prayer. Uh, but I'm conscious this week that the week that we've seen our Prime Minister taken into hospital under the effects of the coronavirus, uh, that we will that we should pray for him and for all of those uh, caring uh, for people in this situation across the world at the moment. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us and you came to this earth to demonstrate how much you love us. And Lord, we, we on this Sunday, we just pray that many hearts will turn to you. We pray that there'll be an encounter with you, the living God. Lord, we pray for our Prime Minister and the NHS, all those that are in the caring professions, looking after those that are affected by this virus. Lord, we pray for an end to this. We pray, Lord, for healing to come. We pray for protection over those workers. And Lord God, we just surrender ourselves into your care and ask that you will look after us uh, because you care for us. Lord, I pray for uh, this message today. I pray, Lord, for an effectiveness of hearing the good news of Jesus, that many hearts will be healed as well. We ask this in the amazing name that is Jesus. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Still you love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Why you won't sit down coming after me? There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me.
2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, astonishing, world-changing events were taking place. A carpenter come teacher was executed. But the news of Jesus' death taking place all that long ago is still spreading across every country and continent of the world today, 2,000 years later. His death has changed and continues to change countless lives. In this morning's message, we're going to hear Billy Graham, one of the most powerful communicators who's spoken about the life of Jesus to more people face to face than anyone in the world's history. And we're going to also hear about lives of individuals who were changed when they encountered Jesus themselves. Dramatic stories. Uh, I want you to really listen in uh, for God to speak to you as you hear this powerful message today. He's undoubtedly been one of the most influential figures in the world. Reverend Billy Graham, one of the most inspirational spiritual leaders of the 20th century. We need you, we love you. Thank you for coming, Billy Graham. He's listened to by ordinary people, by politicians, and by presidents. Our recipient, the man who honors us by being here today. What is your purpose? Go into the whole world and proclaim this message. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Shall make you free. As I look back over my life, it's full of surprises. For example, the time that I first met the queen, the greatest woman in the world, and yet the most simple and the easiest to be with. I never thought I would become friends with people in different countries all over the world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. I see how God's hand guided me. That is the message I want to leave. Love one another. When I began preaching many years ago, it was not with any thoughts that I'd be preaching to large audiences. Come to the cross. His gospel is for everyone. God has done this. One of the great needs in the United Kingdom is to turn to God. This country is in great need of a spiritual awakening. Well, there have been times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and I've seen how far people have wandered from God. Of all the things that I've seen and heard, there's only one message that can change people's lives and hearts. There is a way if you come by the way of the cross. I want to tell people about the meaning of the cross. Not the cross that hangs on a wall or around someone's neck. We receive our freedom purchased by the ransom at the cross. But the real cross of Christ. The cross expresses the great love of God for man. It's scarred and bloodstained. His was a rugged cross. His real purpose for coming was to die. I know that many will react to this message, but it is the truth. And with all my heart, I want to leave you with the truth. God says, I love you. I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. And he loves you, willing to forgive you of all your sins. On our churches, we have a cross. It's embossed on our Bibles. On our Bibles. I thought the cross was a relic. It was a medallion on a necklace at Best. It's an ornament that we wear around our necks, Christians and non-Christians. The cross really didn't have any meaning to me except for something artistic that rock stars wore. But talk about the depth and the real meaning of the cross, and it becomes an offense. Why is that? The cross is offensive because it confronts people. Even so, it's a confrontation that all of us must face. I was really hurting and just didn't understand the source of all my pain and, 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 and problems. I spent my whole life just burdened for something. Hungering for something, thirsting after, chasing this thing 
that I couldn't put my finger on ultimately. I was abused by older people, some in the family, some outside of the family. So as I got older, I always talked back. I always got into fights. My whole world was surrounded by guns and drugs and gangs. I remember in front of all my friends, just telling them to watch this. And as a lady uh, was driving down the street, I jumped in the middle of the street and pointed the gun right at her. Just to see her panic and freak out. And it was just me seeking power. My mom always told me about God. I think I had an idea that God was big and good, but as time went on and I saw more and more tragic things happen around me, I think that was the beginning of me just questioning everything about life and about God. When I was 10 years old, my stepdad came to pick me up and he said that my cousin Kelly was dead. I remember being so mad and really just, just deciding that if God was big and good, why wouldn't he protect my cousin who is so tiny and so awesome, such a funny, brilliant little guy. Why wouldn't God protect him from a huge muscle guy like his stepdad who beat him to death? I look out across an audience when I stand up to preach, and I think of all the people with their different backgrounds and their various needs. And I know that they are objects of God's mighty love. To the point that he gave his son, his only son, to die upon a cross. And the cross was the most terrible form of execution by the Romans for criminals. And Jesus endured all that in our place because of our sins. We deserve the cross. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment and all that that means. I know that there are many people that dispute that. People don't want to hear that they're sinners. To many people, it's an offense. The cross is offensive because it directly confronts the evils which dominate so much of this world. You see, the Bible teaches that all of us are wrong. We've all gone astray. We've everyone turned to his own way. And when we turn to our own way, we go astray from God's way. And that includes the whole human race. And that's why the world is in such terrible danger right now. It's not dangerous so much because we have atomic bombs. It's dangerous because of the human hearts back of the bombs, filled with envy and hate and strife and greed and lust and all the other things that could pull the trigger. thinking that same year that my cousin died about the depth of the evil in the world. I never wanted to have kids. It was just a new person to suffer. That was the year I started to cry myself to sleep every night and stopped believing in God. I couldn't get away from my own depression. So I started studying other religions. There was a lot of nice ideas, but there wasn't any tangible healing. And I remember thinking, I'm tired of the pain in my heart. I'm tired of going to bed that way. I'm tired of feeling like a burden. I'm just tired of not knowing why I'm alive. And so I remember the night I laid in bed and I knew I was gonna commit suicide the next day. I knew that I was not gonna live past tomorrow. 
By 16, I was getting high on a daily basis and got involved with a woman after woman after woman. And you know, when you mix drugs, you mix alcohol, you mix youth, it's cause for an explosion. My mother was really concerned about me. I remember she just grabbed a Bible and said, I don't know what to do, but you just need to read this Bible. You know, I remember taking the pages of the Bible and just ripping them out and throwing them on the ground and saying, I don't care about your God. I don't care about this. This isn't mean anything to me. One reason that the cross is a defense to people is because it demands, it doesn't suggest, it demands a new lifestyle in all of us. Sin is a disease in the human heart. It affects the mind and the will and the emotions. Every part of our being is affected by this disease. How can we break this bondage? How can we be set free? God helps us break those chains. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. He can make you a totally new person. On the day that I planned to commit suicide, I came home from school and my grandma was there and she wasn't supposed to be there. And she looked at me and said, there's something wrong with you. You're gonna go to church. I was like, no way I'm going to church. And she screamed at the top of her lungs like we were fighting back and forth and I just didn't want to listen to her yell anymore. And so I decided, fine, I'll go. And then afterwards, I'll go ahead and follow through with my plan. So I went to the back of the church and slumped down in my chair and hated everybody in the room. And the pastor started speaking and I hated him more than anyone. And he says, there's a suicidal spirit in the room. And of course, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I was, well, this is really weird. <laughs> and I got up and went to the door. A white-headed man was standing there and he stopped me. And it was like, the Lord wants me to speak to you. He wants you to know that even though you've never known an earthly father, that God will be a better father to you than any earthly father could ever be. God knows the pain in your heart. He has seen you cry yourself to sleep at night. The idea was so overwhelming to me. He's like, do you want me to pray for you so that Jesus can take the pain out of your heart? He put his hand on my shoulder and started to pray. It was as if the God of the universe showed up right in front of me. And the first thing I noticed was that God was holy and good. And the second thing I noticed was that I was so not holy and not good. I was in a really dark place. I was really lonely, really depressed. And a friend of mine reached out and invited me to a conference. And I'm thinking, why not? My mind was blown when I got there. I had never seen anything like it. I saw guys with, with bullet wounds and ex-gang members who loved Jesus. And I had never seen anything like that before. And so uh, I was intrigued. I'll never forget the pastor. You know, he started talking about Jesus and in talking about him in an intense way that I had never thought about before. I had never just imagined Jesus as a real person going through real things. I just kind of thought of him as this fairy, off distant person. 
but he brought it home to me and he started talking about Jesus um, being beaten and being whipped for a crime he didn't commit and the skin being ripped off his back and him having to, in the midst of his pain, carry this cross up this mountain of a skull and being pinned to this cross. It was so vivid and visual to me. I could, I, it was like I could see this happening to Jesus. And I remember him saying like, how dare you tough guys call my Jesus a punk? You know, like, look at what he went through. And then the preacher said, do you not know you've been bought with the price? And it just came to a head. It was like, wow. On that cross, God was laying on Jesus our sins. They not only put nails in his hands, but before that, they scourged him. A Roman scourge was a terrible thing. They took whips and pellets on those whips and beat a person almost to death. And then they took that cross and made him carry the cross, which was in his weakened condition was almost impossible. But he carried that cross to a place outside of Jerusalem. And then they put nails in his hands. But that was not the real suffering. The real suffering is when he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible moment, he and God, the Father, were separated. He shed his blood, and the shedding of that blood carries with it God's very life. The blood is the meeting place between God and man. And the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. And that's what Christ was doing on the cross. He was making atonement for our sins, and he was shedding his blood. Now, when you take the blood out, that means you're giving your life. And that's what it means. It means the life of Christ. The cross and the resurrection of Christ offers forgiveness of sin, offers a whole new life, and offers you eternal life if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Jesus literally took all of this on his own back for me. You know, I remember bowing out, just head touching the ground and saying, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. But one step led to another, which led to another. And, you know, I was back drinking and sleeping around with women. And the conviction that I was now feeling was so strong. And I remember driving on the highway, just thinking to myself, God, you gotta do something. Because if you don't do something, I might hurt myself or hurt somebody else. I don't know what's gonna happen, but just don't kill me. I get cut off by a truck and my truck just starts tipping until it flips over and starts rolling fast. The glass is coming in, the windshield cracks. I'm not wearing a seatbelt at all, so I'm kind of floating around the car. And I looked myself over. It was just a piece of glass stuck in my arm. And I pulled it out, and that was it. I said, Lord, I need to get with you. I need you to change me. I need you to really make this real, and I need to stop running from you. I was genuinely trying to know him more and read my Bible and grow. And I really began to be a passionate Christ follower. But you set me free. Oh. I gave you no reason. I realized you don't earn righteousness, that none of us is righteous, not even one, and that our works are like filthy rags to God. Jesus 
Jesus lived the life I could not live and died the death I should have died. You know, that, that gets me every time just to think, man, I gained everything by putting my trust in him. If God had looked at me and said, go away forever, he would have been right. It would have been just as. The same time I felt that, I felt him inviting me to an embrace of grace and love unconditional. It was like God was saying, I love you. I know you're tired of the way you've been living and I will make you new if you will let me. My heart was just, yes, it just said, yes, I, I need that, I want that, please. And that's why I woke up the next day. I just felt such a peace and a joy almost that I'd never felt before. Jesus saved my life and on top of everything else, the life of my son and the new baby. That wouldn't be if Jesus hadn't intervened and rescued me. The most overwhelming thing is to think that Jesus became sin and it was my sin and it was things that I've done the house him on the cross, it was things that I've done. He hung naked on a cross, bleeding in a shameful way, so that I would never have to be ashamed for the things that I've done. The truth is, the truth is, there is no other way besides Christ and what he did. There is no life outside of that. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin. But more than that, he was a righteous one. And when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin. He no longer sees your own heart. He sees Jesus. Now, I don't understand all about it. There are many things about the cross and about salvation that I do not understand. And I'm not told that I have to understand it all. I'm told that I'm to believe. And anybody can believe. A blind man can believe. A deaf man can believe. An old person can believe. A young person can believe. And that word believe means commit. I commit my life totally to Him. Jesus Christ from the cross says, I will save you, I will forgive you, I will change you, I'll make you a new person if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change, to change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. And I know that you're the only one that can change me. Home went dark that violent day. The whole earth quaked at love's display. Three days silent in the ground This body born for heaven's cry
says in spite of our rebellion and rejection God loves you he loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins and when Christ died on that cross he became guilty of lying he became guilty of slander he became guilty of jealousy he became guilty of the most filthy dirty sins Christ took the hell that you and I deserve now God said receive him believe in him Put your trust and your confidence in him and I will forgive your sins and I will guarantee you eternity in heaven. It's all yours and it's all free. All you have to do is receive it. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer sentence by sentence after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive. I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. I have reason for existence. I know where I've come from. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. Do you? If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, then that's the most amazing thing you could possibly do. And I want to encourage you to contact me because I would love to pray for you. Direct message me in some way. Follow the links after the video. I'd love to have an opportunity to pray with you. This truly is, if that's been your prayer, in the sincerity of your heart, the most amazing Easter Sunday. was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet, now at His feet we bow. Shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise. Christ. 
Thanks so much for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Uh, this week we start our Alpha course, a course for exploring the meaning of life. In this time where people are asking the big questions, it's designed specifically for people who, who are new to faith or that journey of faith, uh, to new Christians, or to those who don't yet have faith but want to explore these big questions. Uh, opportunity to sign up will come up on the, the screen at the end. Um, if you've become a Christian this weekend as a result of hearing the message, then that's just such great news. This will change your life, not for just today, but for the whole of eternity. God bless you. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you for your great goodness towards us. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, that you demonstrated your love for us, that while we were still sinners, you died for us. Lord, I pray a blessing over every person watching this and all of our loved ones and family, those connected to. We ask this in the amazing name that is Jesus. Amen. God bless you and see you soon.